Um, another reason that they're going to avoid gridlock is because there, there would be fewer cars based on the Uber model. Most of you should be familiar, at least peripherally, with Uber, uh, the taxi replacing service. Well, the main cost for Uber right now is paying their drivers. So they have recently put in a significant capital investment. I don't know how much yet, but they are saying significant. Um, to buy a fleet of self-driving cars. And think about it, rather than owning a car 24-7 and paying for gas and insurance and parking, when you need to go somewhere, you call the service and you say, I need a car to take me from here to my home, in my case in Wolf. And cars will show up, drive you over, drop you off, and you don't have to think about it anymore. Um, once the price is uh, stabilize, then it'll be the same as renting, uh, only you won't have to drive and you won't have to worry about any of the things I just talked about, parking and insurance. So it will save you money and it will be uh, good for them because they're good in your business. Another major factor in, in the future of infrastructure is potable water and wastewater, uh, particularly because there is going to be water scarcity everywhere, including here. Now, I know what you're going to say. Hey, Kit, have you seen that big wet thing over there? We are, in fact, on the edge of Lake Ontario right now, and uh, the Great Lakes comprise one-fifth of the world's freshwater reserve. That is absolutely true. However, Southern Ontario has some of the worst water use in the developed world. We go through 329 liters per person per day. This is second only to the U.S. in the developed world we have incredibly wasteful water use. This map is from Environment Canada, the website's on the bottom. Um, the green is low water use. Um, coincidentally, it's also low population. Uh, the yellow and the orange are higher water use, and the red, which you can see we are currently in the middle of, is using more than 40% of the available water. More than. Um, this means that we use most of the water we, uh, that we get in a given year. Uh, anyone who is an avid boater will note that uh, Lake Ontario, the water levels do rise and fall as the, as the year goes on. Uh, and it is an evident issue. We have very poor water storage because we're such a water-rich re region. We just don't think about it. Um, incidentally, the number I gave you, 329 liters per person per day, um, that's overall. For residential use, it's about 100 liters less. Um, this is roughly twice the European level of water use. Uh, and of course, significantly more than they're using in California right now. The last thing I'd like to talk about is turning trash into treasure, or mining landfills. Now, most people see landfills and say, this is a load of trash, which is absolutely correct. However, uh, I see a landfill and I say, this is a load of potential. Um, one of the things that is being done, and is actually currently being done in Halton region, is methane recovery. I know you guys do this, and that's fantastic, but you can do it better. Um, there's two things that we can do with methane uh, recovery that we can do better. First off, we can trap the carbon dioxide. Um, I'm sure all of you are familiar with the chemical formula at the bottom. I put that there just to remind myself. Uh, that when you burn methane in the presence of oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water. And so the carbon dioxide we want to keep from going into the air because it's a terrible greenhouse gas and we're trying to reduce that. And furthermore, water vapor we want to keep from going into the air for two reasons. One, it's actually a worse greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. Uh, and two, it's usable water if we cool it down. And I was just talking about water use. So this solves two problems at once.